Sai Da Silva, star of the remixed, reimagined, but still iconic Real Housewives of New York City and the baddest apple in the bunch. Yes. Danny and I are so excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. I'm very, very excited to be here with both of you. I love this energy. This is going to be great. Oh, we are loving your energy. And I feel all the fans are loving your energy and cannot wait to like, just like take a bite of these new episodes. But I always (laughs) love because it's the combo. It's the excitement before the storm right now. How are you feeling before the premiere? I feel good. I feel actually anxious to, to air already. I'm ready to get this party started. Like, let's get this train out the station. Let's do it. Yeah, let's get this party started and okay. let's let's bring a charcuterie board. Let's bring a, char- a charcuterie board. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, I, I am so excited for the fans to really uh, dig into Cheesegate. And you have such an interesting position in Cheesegate because it's it sort of centers on something you allegedly said, but you... You you don't think eating cheese is weird, Sai. Let's clear this up. Let, let, let's talk to the fans about this. No, I'm here to clear my name. Like, I don't think that's weird whatsoever. I did not say that. I really love cheese. Um, numerous people have seen me eat cheese. <laughs> I will host and have cheese in my own home. So it, I'm not the culprit here. It's not me. It's someone else, but it's not me. I like how it's now the shaggy. So it wasn't me. You're like, you're it passing it out. You're like, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. You're like, I'm me. eating the mozzarella. <laughs> I also, I feel like this is a, a great branding opportunity for you. Like we need to do some sort of like Pepperidge Farms collab, maybe craft, like maybe you launch your own cheese. Like, uh, side. Like, uh, yeah, like, yes. Maybe launch my own cheese. Maybe I go to Italy and like get, get some really like luxurious, you know, luxurious cheese. Yeah, Did we gotta you keep expect- it on brand cheese drama to really kick off everything like if you could imagine when you first got the call Sai, you're you're gonna be in you're you're gonna be a roni girl did you think cheese was gonna be so central to you i would never even think that cheese would be discussed to be honest like the whole cheese thing is it's it's so light but and so ridiculously silly that you just would never in a million years think that a conversation would evolve around cheese in general like it's so so silly <laughs> I can't. but I will say like Bryn's delivery when she is like telling the story it is it is so good it's almost Emmy worthy and I can see why producers would be like okay we need to lean into this because the way Bryn is discussing Cheesegate I am I am all ears and eyes baby <laughs> it was ridiculous I'm like but wait I really didn't say it. I'm innocent. I promise you, I am an innocent bystander here. It's not me. We need a we need a lawyer on the cast to help you through all we of that. We do. We do. <laughs> I, I feel like I shouldn't say anything else until I bring my lawyer. Until my lawyer is present, I am mum's the word. But what I love so much about uh, you being on this new season is that we're back in Brooklyn because I'm not sure how familiar you are with Roni history. But one of, I think, me and Evan's favorites, and people have grown to appreciate her so much, Alex McCord really put her uh, Herman Munster shoes on the Brooklyn mark. (laughs) You know, I feel like Alex got the shit end of the stick, though. You know, like, everyone acted like, oh, my God, we have to trek to Brooklyn. Like, Alex was beneath everyone, I felt like. And it's not... Brooklyn is a vibe. Brooklyn is a great place to be. I mean, so many celebrities live in Brooklyn. I mean, you gotta, it's ridiculous how it had such a bad rap back in the day. I remember taxi cabs wouldn't even go to Brooklyn back in the day. Like I grew up here. So I am very much so an advocate of Brooklyn because I've seen it evolve so much over the years, like high school, college, it's drastically changed. But for me, I'm like, Everybody has to know about Brooklyn. We have to know that there's more to New York City than the Upper East Side. There is a lot going on here, and it's a lot of fun. Venture out into different boroughs. Beyonce's favorite pizza place is there. Right? Like, isn't that enough? Queen B has said it. (laughs) Well, and now Saida Silva is repping Brooklyn through and through. And I will say, your brownstone is in a lot better shape than Alex (laughs) McCord's brownstone. I don't know if you remember. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> your your brownstone is stunning Sai. like that is home goals. i cannot wait for the architectural digest feature like it is so beautiful i mean i need to like 
I mean, there's a lot that needs to happen. I, I feel like sometimes when I remember when I first moved, I was so excited. I was like, I'm going to furnish this. I'm going to do this and do that. Somewhere along the lines, I was like, I'm tired here. Yeah. Let's get a new house. You know, it's just, <laughs> but I, I'm going to come back to it. I'm going to come back to it. And you have not only the dream house, but sort of like this, this dream life. You are severely aspirational. You are a content creator with a massive empire. It's growing with Scout the City constantly. I think that a lot of people are going to watch The Real Housewives of New York City and be like, how how did you do it? From like a, a girl growing up in Brooklyn with no Barbies. Now she is here sort of like truly it's building an empire. Tell us a little bit about your path to getting here. It's amazing. Yeah, it's definitely been a very crazy ride. I feel like I've lived several different lives to get here. Um, you know, I started 10 years ago and it was, I was a blogger, you know, it was OG blogs when everyone loved blogs back then. And it was a fashion blog, but it was, it chronicled chronicled the life of me and my daughter. So at that time, it was like I was a new mom, you know, none of my friends had kids, I just was looking for basically more friends, but online, I wanted to meet cool moms, basically. So I, I moved to Montreal for a year and a half with my husband, I didn't have any friends there. And it just it was really tough on me. I didn't like it at all. And I, I felt like I was losing my identity. And I really needed a creative outlet. So I started a blog and Instagram started and I started meeting cool moms who loved fashion and they weren't losing their identity just because they were a parent. And that's how it all started. And I think I went full-time blogging. I was very fortunate with this. I went full-time maybe a year or nine, nine months to 12 months after I started because BuzzFeed did an article on it. And then once BuzzFeed did an article on it, it kind of took off. And then my first interview after a few months after, not even, maybe a month, I was on the Today Show and Jenna Bush came over and interviewed me and my daughter. And it was so sweet and such a surreal moment and full circle almost because now I'm on the Today Show. So it's been a really, really great ride. It's obviously transitioned a lot um, over the years. You know, it's less with my kids more, I'm more camera facing now, just because I can't keep working the kids, you know, they got this thing called school <laughs> and you know, they're just and like, acting no aspirations. They're busy. Yeah. They, you know, they, we, things got busy right here. We're a busy family, but I do try to involve them whenever they feel like they're in the mood. Um, but for the most part, that's how, that's how I started. And you know, but that's how the journey journey went along. I love too, that you were kind of like fully in the, like, on the ground floor of building up like influencing and content creation, everything like that. And what are your thoughts now? Because obviously you've pivoted to so many different platforms and everything kind of keeping up. And now you kind of see people like popping up and you're like, what? Do you ever get moments where like, you didn't earn your stride. I was blogging t a decade ago. Do you ever get that feeling? I do. I do. Um, me and a few of my other friends uh, you usually have a very tight circle in influencer marketing. You know, a lot of you have grown together. A lot of us OG bloggers have grown together. And now we're starting to see an influx of TikTokers and no shade, no hate to TikTokers. It's a lot of work, but it's a different work ethic. Um, whereas they're, they're kind of becoming internet famous overnight. And when it came to blogging, it was something that was a very gradual gain and your community really getting to know you. So it's a long stretch. It's a long, you're in for the marathon, not the sprint. And I feel like the TikTokers are just sprinting. And if they don't keep up, it's a burn. Like you just get burnt out very, very easily. And at a very like young age in the career. Mm. Great you're question. You're in an interesting position now because you are now on the Real Housewives of New York City. So this is sort of like, accelerating um your your uh notoriety or not notoriety but just your fame truly I mean people are going to get to know you in such a a deeper way I feel like your followers are going to feel way more connected to you because they see all these different sides of you and I, I Danny and I have watched the first three episodes of the season and there are like true moments of vulnerability what was it like going into this experience and opening up yourself that way because on Instagram we see the cute fashions, but we don't see the tears. Oh, no, I just don't like to be vulnerable at all, ever. I think that is just, it's my exterior. It's my way of just my entire grind through life. I like hiding the emotion and showing emotion in a corner without anyone seeing me tear up. 
looking in the mirror and taking a deep breath and going, get over it. Things have to be done. I'm glad you had your moment. Let's keep it moving. So it is very hard for me to be vulnerable in front of um, other people. So I think that was probably the hardest thing. And I think people are really going to get to know me on a completely different level than what they see surface level on social media. Because although at the end of the day, even though I'm sharing my life constantly 24 seven on social, it's still very much so curated. You know, I curate exactly what it is that I want you to see and I don't go too deep. So things that become very personal in my life, whether that be with my family or just anything that I'm personally going through, I don't necessarily want to take to social media and share that. You know, I want you to see more of like a more upbeat, happier person that I am. Um, so this is completely a different ball game for me. This is Pandora's box wide open and people are going, I hope that people can relate to some of my struggles and, and see me in a different light and really appreciate it. And I feel it's so real too. Like you were saying, like on social media and online, you're curating and you're thinking, but we, we talked to Bryn and some of the girls a few weeks ago and they were like, we completely forgot there were even cameras most of the time. So you almost are not thinking in the edit way of like, how can I, like, you're just really being so vulnerable and raw. And when those moments started to happen, did any of the ladies in particular, did you feel like a specific connection with that? You were like, oh, I feel like I can really open up because like they're by my side or they have my arm. Yeah, 100%. I think me and Bryn have a lot in common from our from our childhood and our past. And we really connected in that way. Um, and I also really relate to things that Jenna has gone through in the past and kind of helped me understand why she is the way she is or, you know, how she's grown into this person, the successful person that she is today. So I think all of us kind of just opening up and really getting to know each other on this level that goes beyond just the surface level was great for all of us. I mean, it, it almost sounds a little cheesy that we had this like, kumbaya moment but it was very authentic and it just it all happened in a very organic way easy was, your cheese <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it was your um it's so interesting I'm, I'm really excited for viewers to see you open up more about your childhood because even like you you just posted something today like you have lived five lives and you really have like I was so impressed when you were like oh yeah I just I moved out at 16 got a job at Sears like made it work like you've been a hustler since day yeah. one I've always been hustling I think it's just part of my personality I cannot sit still for a long period of time I am someone who has this battery that is on charge as soon as I wake up and it needs to be I need to burn it throughout the entire day if I am not physically moving and doing things. I am so bored and I'm frustrated. I don't feel productive. I'm literally the MacBook, you know, how you have all those tabs open and the wheel is going all around. That's me. And I need to like go in between the tabs. I'm like, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and back to A, you know? Your, <laughs> your battery was turned all the way up. There's this moment when the girls are sort of like discussing the drama in one of the bedrooms at Aaron's house in the Hamptons and you sprint in to get the tea. <laughs> you actually end up falling. I mean, you like, yeah. you risk your life to get the tea, which is very, that, that really feels, um, that feels like me and Danny, like no. we, would, we would be risking our lives to get the really, tea. Like I really ate it. I like ate it hard. I actually really hurt myself too. Oh, yeah. yeah. My entire side was black and blue the next day. I was like, damn, I really bit it on that one. <laughs> but worth it. Worth it. It very, was worth tea. And what I love worth it. about how much like you are open about like how you've hustled up and everything like that. Now, I don't know if you're a more healed person than me. But when, cause in New York, it's hard when you're like working so hard, but then you're like also like rub elbows with people. It's like, oh, well when I summer, you know, when they use like summer as a verb and they're yeah. like, oh my God, you haven't skied yet. And you're like, I hate you. How is like, cause obviously now like Roni has such like, you know, there's like levels of it. And I mean, of course now like you're like living a beautiful life. Was there adjustment periods of just like rubbing elbows with people that you're like, oh, you really annoy me? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I mean, I work in the luxury industry. Yeah. So my events, especially in the summers, I spend a lot of time going in and out of the Hamptons. I don't have a home there. I just go for events, kind of, you know, go in and go out. So I've definitely, I have met tons of different people with the wealth that you cannot imagine. And their problems are completely different from my problems. I And there was one particular instance where I had a lunch with someone who asked me several times, 
do I have a summer home? And at the moment, I did not buy my second house. I had no intentions of buying another house. The thought of having more than one house in the same state to me seems ridiculous. And the person, for whatever reason, I kept saying, no, no. For whatever reason, this person was like, I don't understand. So you don't have a summer house? And my response was like, I don't understand why you don't understand me. <laughs> it's like, the answer is no. <laughs> But I love that you have since leveled up and you got the second yeah. home. I, I, you know what? I wish I could see this person again. I don't know them very well, but I wish. Like I now, I got the summer house. Yeah, I want to be like, hey, remember that conversation? I got a summer house. You're gonna be so proud of me. <laughs> yeah, they would be so thrilled for you. Well, next on the list is a private jet, uh, as yeah. we read in the Cosmo article, because you guys don't have PJs. Is, is that on the docket for you? Not really. I mean, I wouldn't mind parking next to Kim, 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 Kim Air. Like that would be really chic, but I mean, maybe I can hitchhike and she gives me a ride if we ever meet. But for the most part, I don't, I don't necessarily think I want to own my own jet. I, I, I'm not there. I'm, I'm nowhere a, near there. I don't, I don't feel that as a necessity. That is a lot of responsibility. Actually, uh, Sai, your comments in the Cosmo article, I feel like your, your comments out of everyone got the most like buzz around them because that comment about the private jets. Did you see that Bethany and Dorinda responded? No, I didn't. They did. They were like, we basically they were saying like when we were on the Real Housewives of New York City, like no one actually had private jets. We were all just pretending to, to be rich. But maybe they were just speaking from a personal experience. I'm not really sure. But well, I, I love they're listening. I wasn't, the, it, the question wasn't geared towards anyone on the housewives franchise whatsoever so if someone took it personal i apologize it's like nothing it had nothing to do with them i'm just simply stating the fact that this rony cast we're all working girls you know we're, we're here to, to hustle and level up and that's this is this is our mark like this is our journey i'm not speaking for anyone else i would love a yacht you know oh, i would love yeah. a yacht and, and, Us too. and a private plane like sign me up if anyone wants to you know um volunteer a room on your yacht i will i will happily take it happily i also did lol because like Bethany was talking about, we didn't have private jets either. Now she has a 20 grand Chanel bird cage bag, which I did not even know was a purse. <laughs> I literally thought she got, like rescued a pigeon. It's gorgeous. But I was mm -hmm. laughing at the bag. Did you see the bag? Because you're I a fashion did. girl. I didn't see the bag. Did she put it on TikTok? I follow her on TikTok. Did she put it on there? She put it on TikTok. It's a Chanel. I don't know if it's like a, like a vintage thing or something. It's a 20 grand bag that literally is like Miley Cyrus can't be tamed bird cage. I'm going to go check it out. I like it Bethany. She's just out here living her life. Like, she's unbothered and I, I I appreciate that I love a person who is unbothered and she's a great like um housewife to look to because she really made her made her mark made her memes made her moments and made her money exactly she's here to hustle I, I respect it I really respect a, a woman who has amazing work ethic and that is something that Bethany definitely has have you, because you're you're out and about, you're all over the city. Have you had any run-ins with Bethany before? Have you ever like seen her in person? No, I've never seen her in person. I would be like, hey girl, no. <laughs> let's have some tea. Let's spill some tea. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, um, like, I know obviously, well, what I love too is that now we're in places of New York that I recognize in the sense that like I, it's not all on the Upper East Side, which I never go to. So I'm so fun loving places pop up. I don't go to the social clubs you guys go to because I have yet to enter that echelon, maybe the next decade. But is it, did you rub elbows with any of the older Roni ladies? Like, did you, cause like, obviously I feel like they were always out and about at events too. I don't think we go to the same events. Um, <laughs> no shade, no shade. <laughs> I just don't think that we go to the same events. Um, I, I haven't really seen any of them out. I saw Ramona at Art Basel Oh. Um, at one particular event. And other than that, I haven't seen any of the ladies anywhere. You know what? I saw Lisa Renna at Michael Kors. Ooh. She was at a Michael Kors fashion show in February. So maybe a, some of the fashion shows possibly. And I guess, again, the fashion circuit. And when I saw Ramona at Art Basel, it was a fashion circuit. What was your relationship with the Real Housewives franchise before a producer came knocking on your door asking if you wanted to be a part of this? Like, were you a fan? Did you watch? Like, did you have any idea of kind of what you were getting yourself into? I'm a watcher. I'm a, I'm not an avid watcher. I, I like to say I dip in and dip out. 
Um, I think I left Roni maybe after Heather left. And then uh. I watched a lot. I know. I, lo- <laughs> I watched a lot of um, Atlanta. Atlanta is probably one of my favorites. I I am like a Nene Leak stan. I, I think she's so funny. Um, even though she's no longer on the show. I actually, just this season, I started really getting into... Sh- um, she by Sheree, you know. <laughs> Fashion Girls Unite. Why do I feel like you two would be besties? I've just gotten into, I think she says some really funny things in her confessional. And I'm like, she throws this like subtle, funny shade. And I was like, I'm into you. I think she's hysterical. And I'm still a big um, Beverly Hills fan. I love Beverly Hills. Wait, it's funny that you mentioned Sheree's confessionals because as I was watching this new season of New York City, I was thinking, Sai kind of is like the confessional assassin. You oh. throw some fun shade in your <laughs> confessionals. I feel like the ladies kind of have to like watch out for you. I feel like they ha- they, ha- you know, they have fun in scene with you. And then when they're going to be watching some of these episodes back, they're going to be like, Sai said what? Excuse me? <laughs> I just said like, sorry for what I said. I was really hungry. The girls <laughs> know, the girls know I get very hangry. And I, you know, as long as I blame it on, I didn't have food. I think I'll get a pass. Right. And that's, that's like a I'm running gonna... theme in these episodes. Sai is like, where's the food? <laughs> who is going to feed me? I literally am the girl who eats. Me and Upa eat so much. Like we just eat our way through the season. We eat a lot. I, I, bananas. Like your cheese, Uba's bananas. Like <laughs> there are so many opportunities for branding. So much going on. And we love, because that's how you know, because I feel there was an article recently that like, Upper East Side moms are going corner to corner finding Ozempic. We're like, no, we're all eating down in this New York franchise. <laughs> These girls here, we eat. We have appetites. There's no Ozempi over here. Like, you know, we're going to the bodega to get some real food over here. <laughs> what are, do you have any thoughts about the Ozempic craze? Because here in, I live in LA and there's now like a semaglutide ban and like everyone's kind of like freaking out because no one can like take their Ozempic anymore. You know, to each their own, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to judge what someone wants to do with their body. I personally don't know what the long-term effects are. I think that's what really scares me. I mean, I do have some friends that are on Ozempic and they seem to be super happy about them being beyond thin. Um, but <laughs> I'm like, girl, I think we actually should lay back off of it just a bit. I think we've, we've reached the goal. We're going below the goal. Um, again, what do, what makes you happy just so long as it's, you know, and it's in a healthy way. All right. More mm-hmm. cheese at those parties for you then. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to be the girl. <laughs> cheese. I love it. Wait, also, Sai, you spent the morning with Jenna Lyons, um, on, at the Today Show. You two are very good friends. And I feel like there is so much interest in what is Jenna like as a reality star? And I know that you sort of had some uh, misconceptions going into this experience with Jenna. I think you told Cosmo that you thought she was going to be like a bitch, but she ended up being extremely sweet. So t- talk to us about your uh, your journey with Jenna. I think Jenna's personality, when you before me even really getting to know Jenna, again, I'm judging a book by its cover, just like people judge my social media and my photos as well. Like, Jenna is not a very smiley person in her photos. And she has this very standoff, almost coldness to her when you look at her photos that you kind of just think she has to be a bitch, right? Like she is a a, a boss, like she grew J crew. Like she's been there for 26 years. Like you're like, it's, it's crazy to think that a woman who's extremely successful, you automatically are like, she must be a bitch, which is terrible to say. So I'm guilty of saying that. And I apologize because I want to take it all back now. Um, uh, but Jenna ended up being like, she is a very kind, very, very sweet person. She's She's very not, I wouldn't say she's direct. She knows exactly what she wants for herself. She does have moments of coldness because she's so used to just operating in a certain way and not being in large groups of women. Um, I think we, and we are also a lot, you know, (laughs) it's not like this is a tame group. This is a, a group that's highly opinionated and, you know, we can be a little bit loud. So I can see how that's overwhelming for someone who doesn't one travel with a group of women or is always around a group of women. But um, her and I have really warmed up to one another. We are night and day. We are totally yeah. <laughs> opposite. I think people automatically assume she works in fashion. She works in fashion. They must be besties. But what we do is 
I'm more in digital side and what she does is completely different from what I, I do. We both love and appreciate one another. I think her fashion is amazing. Her fashion looks phenomenal on her and my fashion is, you know, it's, it's just a peek into my personality. So it's, it, we're, again, we're so different, but we work really, really well together. And I just had a conversation with her last night because I was so pissed off about something and I was dropping so many F bombs and she was like taking me off the ledge. So she is, she is a good friend and she's a great voice of reason. Yeah, we all need that friend. We need that friend who goes to bed early and yeah, exactly. maybe leaves <laughs> leaves the house to go to her own. Wait, her house looks so cute too. I want to like see her house. I'm like, I'll, I'll leave early to go hang out with her. Her, uh, her apartment is so nice. I like, I just want to live in her shoe closet. Like mine is chaotic and messy. It's like a an organized chaos, I guess you can say. It's like, yeah, if you make a right on the right pile, there is a pink dress underneath a black shirt that's wrinkled. Like, you know. <laughs> that's how you know you're not in Manhattan. There's no grid system. You're just there's like, no you turn. Grid. There's no grid system in my closet. I just, I know exactly where everything is, but it's a little messy and it's a little chaotic, very much so like me. And what well, I like too speaking- about- Oh, no, go ahead, Danny. Oh, I was going to say about you and um, Jenna, because you said you guys are pretty different, but I do feel like a common similarity is that you both kind of mentioned that opening up is not your forte mm. or what you prefer. And it's nice, too, that you see her. And I do love, I feel like when she's just like, because I think she was just like such a, like a boss for so long and like in like that mindset, she's like, I don't know how to make small talk. Here's a game. I love watching her like doing the <laughs> steps to get to know the ladies a little bit more. <laughs> She's like reading the book, How to Socialize. <laughs> <laughs> but but she's she's really following the guide. Like, I feel like she's doing all the things. No, she's really sweet. She's really great. And I really hope that the audience gives her a chance because there's more, there's so much more to her that we're going to see throughout the season that even I was like, whoa, really? I didn't know that, you know, and she really opened up with me and I had a lot of one-on-one time with her. She's a really great person and I, and I adore her. Yeah. I mean, and she even like facilitates a moment in the premiere where you can (laughs) get through the cheese drama. And then like minutes later, we're discussing sex and like very explicitly viewers need to like, stay tuned for that. It's like, you guys will, will not be disappointed. It gets sexy time. It does. I don't think this is a, a show for your children. Hide your kids. This yeah. is not come for the no, cheese, even... stay for the blank. Yeah. Yeah. Cheese. No, even like uh two truths and a lie got very steamy. Two truths and a lie was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. There's some things that Jessel said that I was I was complete. <laughs> I can never look at an ice cream truck the same way. I'm just gonna say I that. can't look at Jessel the same. I was like <laughs> She's a super freak, guys. A super freak. Wait, she, and because she, you were talking about double homes, is your other home a Hamptons vibe? Like, are you a Hamptons girly? Because you say you go, you used to go out there a lot for events and everything like that. Because it seems like Erin and Jenna are full Hamptons vibes. What's your relations with the Hamptons? No, I'm not a Hamptons girly. I do go because hey, that's where luxury fashion does a lot of events. So I will, I will flock too. But I don't. Again, I don't have a home, so I, I will probably stay at a friend's house or I'll stay in a hotel whenever I go for an event. Or sometimes I go same day and come right back. And it's a lot of travel. Um, I am an upstate girly. Like, I want to feel Ooh. refreshed. I want to feel like I'm not being charged $18 for four string beans. Like, okay, I that. don't want to make a reservation a month in advance to get into a restaurant. Like, that's not my idea of a break. I want to actually feel like I'm taking a break, that I'm not stressed out, that I'm not seeing every single person from the city that I'm trying to run away from. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just, I want a summer home to be relaxing. And when I'm in the Hamptons, I don't feel relaxed at all. When you pack for your upstate home, do you pack like you packed for your cast trip? To the Hamptons, sigh. <laughs> I did sigh. I had to admit, I I gave a little side eye when I was seeing those bags. So I just let you know. I didn't know what I wanted to wear. I had no idea. <laughs> Got to have our options. It be a girl needs options. Yes. And I just had so much in my closet. I was like, maybe I can do more of a. Maybe I could create content. Doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to wear all of these looks. There's nothing worse than traveling, and then thinking, oh my god, I should have brought those pants. And you know what? Aaron didn't give us the entire itinerary. So I had no oh. idea what we were going to do. So therefore, Aaron. I just, you know, a girl has got to be prepared. I am a woman who loves to be prepared. 
that's all. How did you prepare then fashion wise for your first season of the Real Housewives of New York City? I mean, just watching the first few episodes for I mean, definitely you make this show your own runway. I feel like a lot of the other women also approached filming this show similarly. And, you know, New York City, it's like the, the city of fashion. There's a, there's a lot of pressure there, especially for a content creator whose work is very, very much fashion focused. Right. Um, yeah, for me, I felt like I just I dove into it in a way that I, I got extra help because typically I reach out to brands and do tons of pulls. I did not purchase a bunch of clothes for the season. Like that's just not how my business operates typically anyway. And I love to wear things that one are not out in stores yet to mm. promote um, whatever designers up and coming uh, clothing campaign is or whatever that they have. So I love ready to wear. I love things that are on the runway or I love things that are vintage. Um, so I hired my stamp, my stylist, Daniel Gaines, who I am obsessed with. And we just kind of came up with a plan. I was like, look, I want to pull things that aren't out right now. Um, things that you just can't find. And I also want to create content with them at the same time. So it was for me working two jobs at the same time, killing two birds with one stone. And that's just how I approached it. I love that. Wait, so, cause I was going to ask and it might be like, there isn't an answer, but did you splurge on any celebratory big purchase after like the announcement getting cast after wrapping filming or for the premiere? Like how was I going to treat herself for her first season housewife? Like what's on Danny, the- I, I spent all my money on that house. I'm still renovating. Okay. That was, <laughs> that was what I celebrated on. <laughs> I'm buying furniture. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that person who told me I didn't get a summer home, why didn't you tell me the expense that came with it too? You should have bought me. <laughs> <laughs> furniture, not Fendi. That's what we're spending our money right. on. <laughs> no, I feel very fortunate that I have designers that allow me to pull um, everything. Majority of everything that wasn't from my closet was completely on loan and I gave it all back. I like that. Wait, oh, and I want to ask too, because since you are like so tapped in to fashion and particularly New York fashion, is there a trend going on right now that you're like, can we, can we wrap this trend up, please? Can we, can we, who's this for? This is a really great question because I am the girl who wants to try every single trend. Like I will try everything and anything. If it's on, I'm like, forget it. Let's do it. Why not? It doesn't hurt to try. Like, again, I dress for my moods. We don't know what kind of mood yes. I'm in. We have you tried you know? and failed any trends? Even, I don't know. I feel like failure is not an option for you, but some trends are hard. Yeah, I don't fail. No, let me see. Um, Y2K was having a really, it's a huge moment, right? And it just was the crop tops, the tennis skirt, the shoes, um, the socks with the loafers, uh, very Hailey Bieber. I, I still like it. It just reminds me of very much so me when I was in school. It feels very nostalgic. I know I am not that age. I should not be wearing tennis skirts and crop tops. And oh, like but you can totally pull it off. And I love that it's coming back in fashion because something tells me you were like the ultimate baddie in like the Y2K era. I was a baddie. I had the beeper on the hip. I had the nameplate. I had the hoop earrings. You couldn't tell me anything. I had like so many rings on my fingers, which still, it kind of, you know, <laughs> some things don't change, honey. It doesn't some change, yeah. <laughs> who, were, who were some of your, like, Y2K fashion icons, like, during the time? Like, who, who were you sort of looking to for inspiration? I don't know if there was any, like, a celebrity per se, but I think we were all reading, like, Delia's magazine like you know what I mean like catalogs catalogs used to come to your house and you would be like oh my god this look is so cute you know there it was just a moment in time Arden B like I was going to BB Arden B like <laughs> bedazzled like shirts that said BB on it you know and these like tacky little tight dresses like that was the era back then <laughs> it was a different oh. time I love that. I love. No, when I lived in New York City, Sai, I actually, for a brief moment, I think it was 2012, I had a part-time job at Juicy Couture and a part-time okay. job at BB. And this was in 2012, like Juicy Couture and BB like weren't really cool. But I was like, like the, my inner like 12 year old when it was cool, I was like, wow, like I'm living the absolute dream. And I obviously can't wear anything sold at Juicy or BB, but I would just spray the perfumes on me and pretend like I was yeah. the baddie that you were. You're like, I am living an American dream. No one uh, can even touch me, right? I was living really was. For you. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I was obsessed with Paris Hilton. <gasps> I was obsessed with Nicole Richie. Oh, Simple yes. Life era. 
like Frankie B jeans, ass crack out, like ass yes. crack cleavage was the vibe. That <laughs> I hope that never comes back. That was disgusting. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. And I also, I used to eat so much cupcakes and junk food back then. I had like a muffin top. So it was like the muffin and the crack that were coming out of my jeans, my Frankie B jeans. It was like not cute. Nothing about it was sexy. It wasn't hot, but I was- You cop- just sang- Muffin top and Frankie B jeans like is giving me like the warmest feeling <laughs> makes me... in my heart right now. Like I want to go to like Starbucks, grab a Frappuccino, oh, maybe get a bag god. of Cheetos. Like oh, oh god, put on my Von know? Dutch hat. And there was no Instagram, so no one knows what happened. Exactly. Yeah. Von Dutch and Eddie Ed Hardy. Remember Ed Hardy? Oh, Do wow. I remember Ed Hardy? I like li- I so I grew up in North Carolina and like Ed Hardy, like wasn't really available or accessible, but I, I found it on eBay and you best <laughs> believe I rolled up into high school and my Ed Hardy, my Von Dutch, everything. I was doing the absolute most, but probably you said you didn't fail. So I, I, didn't I, fail. I mean, I, I look back at some of those photos though, and it looks like a failure to me, <laughs> but I was very confident. So yeah. that's <laughs> yes all that matters at the end of the day and how would you describe your style today I feel like just hearing you and catching your vibe it's it's probably like still an evolution yeah I think I'm a I'm a chameleon I I kind of I love change I know a lot of people don't do well with change I embrace it and I I think that change is just a part of life it's a part of your journey it's a part of your growth I think if you if you're not changing and evolving and growing, you're dead at the end of the day, you know, like that's for me, it's, it's everything to just try something. And I love to try different things. Um, I, I won't stick to one thing in particular because I get bored very easily right now. I'm really into quiet luxury, you know? So it's like a very understated, no labels, very chic. Like, is she rich? Does she have a second home? I don't oh, know. Oh, wait. You got to ask her. Is everybody <laughs> walking down the street like, oh my God, yes. Oh my God, she's so rich. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Is she a housewife? <gasps> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> wait, because I want to know too, because um, I feel like uh, you were talking about Atlanta and Beverly Hills Loving, and those are two franchises with so many fashionable people. Because I don't want, uh, which of them would you, a lady from either of them, who would you want to like clothes swap with? Maybe Dory. I yeah. was going to say, you guys need a whole fashion. Yeah, I think she has tons of things that I can go in her closet and kind of like, you know, swap out for my own. But then again, I'm borrowing everything. So I don't know if she has anything. <laughs> you got to, you know what? Closet. You got to call Marlo and borrow some things from Mar- the archive. Marlo has, so, I mean, the bags. I'm all for Marlo's bags. Marlo has so many bags. It's insanity. I'm like counting them up. We need like a little counter next time if there's like a season or we can <laughs> do a compilation of all the bags that she has because I'm here to collect. Marlo, if you see this, I'll give you my address. Yeah. <laughs> see, I feel like she would send a bag for yes. I feel like she would. Wait, are you a bad girl or a shoe girl? Ooh. I'm a bad girl. Oh, she's a bad, bad girl, girl, I'm a bad, bad girl. girl. I like baggage. I love, bring on the baggage, baby. Wait, what is a bag that, like, do you have like a, a bag that is like your honorary child? You know what? The first like proper Chanel bag I ever bought myself was a um a black medium classic Chanel bag, um, caviar leather. And it, that's my baby. Like, I don't think it will, it's timeless. It is so timeless. It is so chic. My daughter constantly is like, when you die, can I have your bags? It's like, excuse oh. me. Wait, how old is your daughter? I love that she's, she's asking. She's a- <laughs> okay. Wow. 11 going on 25. That 100%. is, that what is she- amazing. She tries my bags on all day. Actually, Oddly enough, because I do do this, I work in this industry, you know, I do a lot of things with my kids too. Um, Fenty sends her bags or Dior sends her bags for her birthday. And it's insanity. I, I, I have to sneak in her room and borrow a bag sometimes. Like, (laughs) (laughs) and is she normally cool about letting you borrow? She wakes up. I remember one day I, 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 she has this neon orange. It's a tiny, tiny little neon orange um, Dior bag. And it's, so, it's a Dior vibe. It's so cute. And I was like, oh my God, I'm wearing this all black outfit. It would be so cute with it. And she was sleeping. So it's, I went in her room. She literally was like, 
what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> She's like, not so fast. Excuse me. I was like, I created your lifestyle. And she was like, it's because of me that you have this lifestyle. I'm oh. thinking, oh, you're right. My daughter's just... middle name is Scout and the blog was Scout the City. Okay, and so, so she, okay. She's right. Touche. Wow, she is a, wait, what's I, her sign? What's her sign? I feel like she's a Virgo. Oh, oh she, okay. she, that's like, she's like a mini Beyonce. She, she is, you know, I have no idea. She's main character. She is a main character. You're yeah. her blue yeah. ivy. Yeah. No, she's blue ivy. No, oh, she's, she's not. No, she's, she's blue ivy because she's more like, mm, mm -hmm. do you know who my parents are? Mm, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> like, well, you know, I, super chill. Speaking of your kiddos, how did they feel with uh, having the cameras around? Did they sort of like um, welcome this reality TV energy? Are they excited for mom to uh, to become a star? Like what's what's their whole uh, take on it? My son is six. So I think he's kind of at that age where he's just kind of like some days I'm in the mood and other days I'm not in the mood. And I think when he's not in the mood, you know, production is very they're very great with it. You know, they're very accommodating. They get it. You know, they get that these are children and you know sometimes that they they want to be filmed and sometimes they don't but for the most part he was great you know he was just like hey we're having a party look at all these people the one thing that my son does though he is when I tell you girl crazy there was <laughs> there was a producer that he was in love with and if she stood behind the camera he would stare like a death stare into the camera like this <laughs> and so it was like for a brief second we were like just pretend they're not here, you know? Like there is some mystery to this. And He's like, no, that's my wife. Yeah. No, and he was like, mommy, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking at her. And oh. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, that's really sweet. That's so cute. And he just, he would develop these crushes that were really sweet. So he's great. My daughter, again, like back to her, she's main character. Like when she found out that we were doing this show, she was beyond thrilled. And the first thing that came out of her mouth, she was like, do you think this is going to catapult my acting career? I was like, oh, I didn't know that you were an act. What acting career? I didn't, I had no idea. She's like, yeah, I'm going to be an actress. She's currently a ballerina, but she's, she wants to completely like venture off into being an actress. Triple threat. I yeah. also love, I feel like she probably was like, no mom, I got cast. You can yeah. be in some scenes. You can be in, but it's me. You can, you can make a cameo in my show, but I'm main character. She's yeah. main character. Oh, sure. I love it. How does your hubby feel about it all? He, very, by the way, he is very handsome. Sai. Yeah. He Thank is a cutie. I'm going to tell him that you said that. Oh, he, we, we, we were texting about it. Yes. Well, because like Danny and I definitely have like a list of like hot house husbands. And I think your man has like entered the top five for sure. Oh, amazing. He's going to love this. Love it. I'm going to tell him as soon as we get off this call. It's oh, you be better. Yeah. He'll be on the next Zoom. <laughs> He, um, you know, he's very private. So when I first told him, like, this is something that I really want to do, I think, first of all, doing the new era of this franchise is is history and also to represent yes. a city that you love so, so much. Like, I am honored. I'm honored to have a seat at this table. I'm happy to be here. So when I told my husband, I'm like, this is no, I'm like, you don't understand. This is a big deal. Like, this is a really big deal. And, you know, he saw my excitement and he said, at the end of the day, if this is something that you really want to do, I 100% will support you. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of his coming out party, I guess you can say, because no one has that. ever actually seen him on social media. I no. love that. You know, well, speaking of this, cool. like, wait, yeah, your followers are going to be like, wait, who, who is this man? I know. Who's this? Is that, is he a rental? Is that yeah. a, <laughs> is he the summer house? Oh, okay, yeah. Rent, rent a husband? Yeah, summer yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of the excitement and the the history making nature of this Roni reboot, Sai, I was in the audience at uh, the Watch What Happens Live at BravoCon when all of you came out on stage with your apples. I definitely felt like full body chills for all of you. What do you remember in that moment? It was so special. Oh my God, it was crazy. All the hair on my arms like stood up. I've never experienced anything so insane. There were rows and rows of people. Like, so when I, I had no, I really had no idea. I've never been to BravoCon. I've never, I've seen photos, but I've never seen anything like this. And the energy is unmatched. And when I tell you everyone is vocal, like if they don't like something, you will 
know about it. So, I mean, just going out there, I felt like it was just, it was electrifying. That energy was fantastic. It was, I think that was a moment that could not be matched. It was an unmatched moment. Yeah. I remember I was, um, because I was at Hammerstein ballroom, I think. And I was like trying to find the bathroom before I found my seat. And I saw all of you sort of like getting ready, like, but, but like backstage or like in that, like kind of like lobby ish yeah. area, like on the, on the mezzanine. And I was like, Oh my God, it's the new New York city cast. Like I was like freaking out and everyone, you guys just were like glowing in person. You all looked so, so good. It was like, you it know, also like, celebrities. sounds like, Oh. Evan was in a place he should not be. I feel like you were trying to go to a bathroom <laughs> that was behind the scenes. Was he sneaking in? I mean, maybe she I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know, but I you caught the glimpse. <laughs> I caught the glimpse and like I could just like you all looked like immediate stars. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. It was, it was a it was nerve-wracking to say the least, but it was looking back on it, it was just such a special moment. It was a very memorable special moment. And Andy seems so excited for Andy's this awesome. Wait, I love Andy. He's tell like me. my dad. He's yeah, like, tell what? me about some of the conversations that you've had with Andy going into this because I think a lot of people have asked you guys that you know what have the OG Roni women told you, but I think it's you know really interesting maybe what Andy has told you as you enter this world. Yeah, no, Andy. No one knows this better than Andy, right? You know, this is his baby. So, and also this is a first for him too. So it's not, it's not just a first for us. It's a first for him that this is a complete clean slate. So even though this is 14th season, it's also like almost like a first season. Um, so we're kind of going in this together and he just, he's just so positive and he's just so great to work with. He's beyond professional, you know, his words of advice really, really hold weight, um, with me. Like, he's just very, he knows I'm on social media. He knows this is what I do for a living. And he's very like, listen, this is a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. Like what you normally do, you can like throw that out the window basically and, and, and start all over again with Bravo fans because they are it's a different type of fan base that you're not going to get anywhere else um and he told me basically stay clear of comments you know mm, don't read smart. comments and he's like just focus on you know things that bring you joy and the things that make you happy with the show and everything like that and it's like stay away from haters and i 1000 percent agree I also feel all of you must have like an extra special place in his heart because he's so excited with it being the first time but also he is a downtown new yorker himself so i feel he probably is like watching all of his spots unfold and it's just like it's like a kid before like their birthday for this premiere for him too I, I yeah I think we're all in it together right it's literally a first it's a first for all of us so it's very exciting I think it's it's really he's excited you know he said this thing where you know someone someone asked him um a question and said so how is the new cast and he stopped for a moment and said it's very different and everyone took it in a way that oh it's not going to be good it's you know reading in between lines that there were no lines to actually read and when he said it, I was like, he's so right, because that's what this cast is. It really is. Th that is the explanation. It's not that it's a it's a terrible show. It's an amazing show. I'm really proud of the work that we did. But it really is different. Like at the end of the day, we don't want to be compared to the OGs because we can't fill those shoes. Those are really big shoes to fill. And I praise them for, for the path that they created for us. But we also want people to give us a chance because, again, it's just a new beginning. It is a completely different show. And being a Bravo celebrity and a Real Housewife is such a singular experience. And with that singular experience comes all these like moments that no one really gets to to have like going on Watch What Happens Live, filming a reunion. Like there's so, so much exciting stuff is coming up in the pipeline for you, Sai. Like what are you most looking forward to? I feel like you're probably already thinking about your reunion dress. Oh, oh my God, of course. I've already started talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I called my stylist and was like, honey, what are we going to do? Are we going to go vintage? I love a vintage moment, like an archive. Yeah. <gasps> Will Versace let me play in her archives? Like I... I would die. I, mean, I could also see you being the first housewife to in like part one, part two, doing outfit changes. There, I, you know what? You hit the nail on the head because this could be 
this could be a moment, right? There's something there. Yeah. I think there's something there. I think I'm going to take you up on this. I oh. wonder if that's okay. Let me ask Andy. Um, you know what? I feel housewives mentality is forgiveness, not permission. So I think you just pull and say, right. I'm going to use the bathroom, full new ball gown. You're oh right. my God. That would be, that would be such a serve. You, that's if you do that. I am I am manifesting that and also manifesting and producing credit for Danny for, for the reunion. 100%. I will give you all the credit. All or we'll the just credit. go shopping with you. That's actually all we ever want to do is just yeah, shopping. I mean, I'm, I'm all for shopping. It makes me happy. That's my therapy. I mean, it's a very expensive therapy, but it does the trick, you know? No copay. No, co- no, no copay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need insurance for that. Oh my God, Sai, we could talk to you for hours and hours. Thank you for taking the time. And thank you for just like entering the Bravoverse. I feel like we all will be better for it. Thank you so much. This was amazing. I love this energy. I would love to come back. This is so much fun. Let's oh, please maybe come like, back yeah, when season is over, like we could talk about everything. It would be really amazing. I'd love to, I love talking to both of you. That'd be our oh, Thank you, Sai. Well, actually, actually, now that you say that, we are, we're, we've done live shows in the past and we are planning our next live show for the podcast during fashion week. And it's actually going to be a fashion week themed show. And you being one of the the biggest fashionistas on Bravo, if you're interested and if you're around, we can send you details. I think we can make this work. That sounds fun. It's It's a busy week for New York, but I think like, yeah, let's try and make it work.